Hello, it's Joe, and happy holidays, everybody. I hope that you're having a great holiday and taking a little break from work. And if you're not, bless you for having to work during this time. And I hope that you're taking this time to do some making and creating and learning and growing and having fun, in addition to, you know, the whole family thing. Today it's time for Hips Experiment number two, and that experiment is going to revolve around the Gangsta. A little bit of history behind the Gangsta model. The Gangsta model was uploaded by Thingiverse user YZorg on December 30th, 2013, so it's coming up on its three-year anniversary. More likely you'll be watching this after its three-year anniversary, so happy third-year anniversary, Gangsta. It was uploaded at a time when Thingiverse didn't have a whole lot of very creative models. Most of the models on there were very technical and very uh, purposeful, made in open scad, made by very technical people. And something about the Gangsta, maybe it was just because it was organic and there weren't a whole lot of organic models at the time, or maybe it was something else, it caught the imagination of the Thingiverse users, and it got printed and remixed and remade so many times in so many ways that it got just thousands of children. Maybe not thousands. I should check that number. Probably over a hundred. Thing is, you don't see the gangsta around very much anymore on Thingiverse. Users like Dutch Mogul or Cerberus333 or myself are uploading artistic and beautiful models all the time, and so we don't really need the gangsta anymore. And so I think it's time that we retire the gangsta. So this is going to be the last gangsta, this is going to be the death of the gangsta, and I'm going to take it, it's again printed out in hips, and I'm going to drop it this time in a bottle of turpentine. Uh, my, uh, my bottle of D-Limoline, which I kept calling Limoline D, sorry about that, D-Limoline, which is hard to get a hold of and difficult to find, it's very cloudy right now, and I heard somebody say that hips dissolves in turpentine, so we're going to test that out today as we retire the gangster. I've got him tied down to a little weight, so hopefully he'll sink to the bottom. See ya. To the crappy webcam time lapse. So here we are the next morning. It hasn't quite been 24 hours, but the uh, turpentine solution has gotten so muddy there's no point in filming it anymore. The reveal has been destroyed because this is what's left. Yes, there was a skeleton there inside the gangsta. And unfortunately, there's still a lot of hips on it. It looks really kind of gruesome. This would have been a fantastic print to do for Halloween and... Had things been in order, I certainly would have done that. And, in fact, there's a big sludge of hips and turpentine at the bottom of the print here, which means to me 
that it doesn't really dissolve it at all. So maybe if I let the turpentine settle, I can fit, you know, pour out the good turpentine on the top and still be able to use it. It's still in the experimental phase. I'm going to take this and drop it in the D-limoline for a little while and see if it can finish off the job. Because there are parts of this print, like the, the tailbone there, that would not have printed uh, without supports that I'd have to break away and they'd leave little flaky bits. When I get this cleaned off, this is going to be a beautiful little skeleton. If you're interested in doing this yourself, the model for this will be up on Thingiverse. It will be called Gangsta is Dead. And uh, it actually, though, the, the version that I did was very interesting because it relies on a new feature in MakerWare version 2.4.1. It's kind of an undocumented feature. In MakerWare 2.4.1, if you put two models on top of each other in the same space, the model on the right will be printed and the model on the left will fill in the space. It automatically kind of does a, a Boolean exclude of the two. So you don't have to do any math. Um, and then when it prints, if you do a preview, you'll be able to come up. And if you look at that preview, there's a lot of plastic around the outside edges. And uh, that plastic is the, is the wall that's there when you're dual extruding stuff. But it's this time, it's kind of wiggly, as opposed to in the old versions, it was exactly straight. And I think that that's to counteract some of the ABS shrinkage, but it worked great. My only complaint is that that wall kind of used up most of the plastic so that by the time it got to the very tip top of the head, the skull was already exposed and I tried to hide that fact when I dropped it in the, the, the turpentine, but it was pretty obvious that the skull was already exposed if you knew there was a skull there. So go check it out, uh, maybe print your, your own out, but this is exciting for me. Because it means that it opens up a possibility of prints that I never had, and I'm going to explore one of those prints next time on Hips Part Experimentation Part Three, just as soon as I get some more hips. Ran out right at the top. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned. If you are interested in learning 3D modeling for home 3D printers, then check out the Beginner's Guide to 3D Modeling. 3D Printing Blueprints by Joe Larson. Learn more at learn3dprintingblueprints.com. Oh, quick addendum when using turpentine. My whole room smells very piney, and if I weren't recording it, I would have done this in a well-ventilated area outside. Now, thank goodness it's Christmas, so the piney stuff isn't so bad, but it is flammable, so be careful. I need to get rid of this smell, so I think I'm going to go light a candle. Just kidding. Bad idea.